Very well. Time now for that discussion. We uh, there has been so much hyped in the last, I guess, 18 or so hours. Yesterday, the presidential candidate for Azimio Moja One Kenya Alliance made bare his promise for the country should he clinch power. Let's now give you some of those highlights before we get into the discussion and understand what has been captured there, what has not been captured, and what we need to focus on more better. Remember, the Azimio presidential candidate is in the fifth presidential candidate to be cleared by the IEBC to vie for that seat come August 9th in this year's general elections. He made quite a number of promises, social protection and so much more. Here then are some of those that we prepared for you. Now, top on the list is a devolution. Uh, Raila says he wants to increase uh, funds to the, uh, to the counties and of course advance the one county, one product program which seeks to now create at least one uh, factory in every, industry, in every county, I beg your pardon, to be able to create jobs in those uh, counties, and then provide material and technical support to counties. Remember, we have seen him very, being very emphatic on uh, the RPL, the recognition of, pub, of, of prior learning, which seeks now to empower those who have previous learning experiences. There you have it, recognition of prior learning uh, and, and get certification for those working in the Joakali sector. Encourage MOUs between Jokali and the associations and TVETs. And then finally, spearhead made in Kenya products. This also falls short of being a protectionist policy. But then again, it is for the good of the country because the resources and the funds will be revolving around the people that are, uh, of course, manufacturing them. Let's look at women empowerment and lock access to financing for women-led businesses. Address plight of widows and single mothers. Social protection. We'll be talking about this with my guest in studio. He'll be telling us what needs to be addressed if Raila's promise is sufficient enough. And of course, ensure adherence to the two-thirds gender rule across government. More of that manifesto, that 41-page manifesto that the uh, presidential candidate for Azimio uh, Laumoja One Kenya Alliance launched last night. Quite a detailed one right there. Uh, even as some pundits feel that it's it's not as generous on detail. Let's look at agriculture. In the last um, economic survey of 2022, there was a revelation that agriculture contracted by, a, by about 2%. Well, the Azmir uh, Manifesto now seeks to create an enabling environment for uh, uh, for climate, for smart climate agriculture, and of course, commercialize large government land into productive agricultural uh, agricultural enterprise. Factor in climate change adaptation and mitigation. And there was one promise he made right there that fertilizer would be subsidized from the current six thousand Kenya shillings down to two thousand Kenya shillings. We want to see how that pans out because farm inputs are a big, big factor in in in, in agriculture. And let's look at manufacturing, invest in emerging technologies to expand job opportunities. Quite there, quite a statement that's there. It is too broad. We want to look into that. Boost productivity by MSMEs and of course uh, the sector to spark growth. Uh, focused quite largely on wealth creation. Some more on the uh, the new manifesto: sovereignty, people to remain sovereign, ensure continuity of min minimal disruptions of government services ensure optimal resource allocations. And of course, we've seen him become very, very key on justice issues and the like. Uh, a bit more on the numbers and, of course, the manifesto by the Azimio One Kenya presidential candidate deliberate fight against corruption, ensuring efficiency in public service delivery, secure all economic revolution and gains. We are now joined. Um, of course, we want to now give you the details, the meat. And of course, the pieces. Joining me now to cross the T's and dot the I's on the Azimio One Kenya Alliance Manifesto is Mbuki Mburu, a public policy and youth development advocate. Good to see you, Mbuki. What stood out for you in that manifesto? Thank you, Brian George, for having me this morning. Um, a lot stood out for me, and, mm -hmm. and I must appreciate that also the Azimio team being the first to release their manifesto, mm -hmm. but also just saying that it was quite wide consultative, because I have been in different sectors, in the mm -hmm. youth sector, mm -hmm. and also in the cooperative sector, and I must say it was quite consultative. I think um, we are so used to very big technical documents sometimes that we don't appreciate mm -hmm. uh, when we try and minimize or we try to make it more readable to the public. 
work. So mm -hmm. I must appreciate that that is very evident in Azimio um, manifesto. Mm -hmm. But really to say that what really stood out for me is around the youth coordination, okay. um, around having the ministry. Because mm -hmm. uh, in the youth space we are discussing about the youth commission. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we are not in a referendum. We are going to an election. Sure. So having the, cabin, the ministry of youth coordination is very important because mm -hmm. currently, if you look at the National Youth Service, it's currently under the Ministry of Public Service and uh, Gender. Mm -hmm. If you look at the National Youth Council, mm -hmm. it's in Ministry of ICT and Authority. So as we are coming up to say that, you know what, we are operating within the existing legal frameworks, mm -hmm. and now we'll have a Ministry of Youth, mm -hmm. then that allows sort of a coordination. Mm -hmm. But then also this ministry can be able to create frameworks in which they can be able to coordinate with other ministry functions. So I think it's not all lost, but also a ministry will ensure that youth issues will be funded. Mm -hmm. Right now, the National Youth Council is struggling, struggling with funding. Sure. So we don't have concrete programs for young people. Mm -hmm. So I think for me that really stood out. Um, but also we are having discussion about county youth policies. How do we decentralize some of this? So maybe the, the Ministry of Youth will help young people mm -hmm. have county youth policies mm -hmm. um, which already the National Youth Council is leading. Um, the other aspect that also stood out for me is the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We must be able to appreciate yeah, mm -hmm. that Kenya for the longest time we've mm -hmm. been a, a consumer economy. Yeah, true. And now the Azimio um, manifesto is coming out very strongly in the mm -hmm. sense of how do we support our local manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, you know removing the levies and uh, especially for youth led manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, buy Kenya build Kenya I think that was very powerful mm -hmm. and just looking at how China re um, evolved in terms of industrial mm. and um, they took such a short time by the way yeah, very short time. Yeah. You know, the cottage industries and um, what, what the backyard industry, mm. appreciating that, you know what, we are all creative. Kenyans are innovative. Did Definitely. you look at Kenyans during the COVID period? Yeah, yeah. They were able to come up with, you know, things to wash your hands without mm. touching and the soap and everything. Mm. And all manner of things and beds mm. and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's really to appreciate that you know what, Kenyans are innovative mm -hmm. They can we can use the backyard industry mm -hmm. to be able to build the local manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But also they were, were earlier having a discussion in terms of the textile industry mm -hmm. and the Mitumba kind of discussion mm -hmm. Rwanda struggled with that but mm -hmm. now they're there Mm -hmm. Kenya is able to do that. And mm -hmm. if we appreciate that we can build Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, build Kenya in that sense, in then sense. we can be able to do that. Also something that uh, um, stood out for me, mm -hmm. It's a cooperative sector. Okay. If you look at, um, I happen to be a director of uh, one of the leading circles in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at it um, from the manifesto, mm -hmm. at least they have talked about the regulation. They have talked about the central liquidity system, which is very good. Mm -hmm. If you look at the circle industry, for example, in Kenya, it contributes 800 B. Almost, you know, almost a quarter of our budget. Of our budget, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that means if we strategically invest in that um, in, in that sector, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to move. Look at U.S., Canada, Ireland. Mm -hmm. The circles are the biggest financials um, in the country. Instruments, okay. Yeah, instruments. Mm -hmm. So we must be able to position ourselves to mm -hmm. be able to be in that sector. Within that scope. Yes. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the way you paint a picture of structural a framework that is put to address all of these issues, particularly in the youth sector, because we are the biggest uh, population in the country currently. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what he didn't sufficiently handle. What do you think the Azimio presidential candidate should have given mm -hmm. a bit more emphasis? Yes, yes. So in terms of emphasis, I think um, and when you're talking about youth issues as well, mm -hmm. um, government has a lot of vast land. Mm -hmm. And thinking about, you're talking, he's, he talked about agriculture heavily, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which I didn't manage to talk in the first uh, question. Mm -hmm. But really, he talked about agriculture. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about agriculture, mechanizing, how are you thinking about, for example, the, the big government land that we have, mm -hmm. how do we ensure that at least 10% of that government land mm -hmm. goes to young people? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the land tenure system in Kenya, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow young people to own property or to own mm. land. Mm. Land by itself is so expensive True. and older generation own more land. So mm -hmm. how do we ensure that you know we are recruiting more young people mm -hmm. in the backbone of our economy? Mm -hmm. And property um, so, ownership. Yes, and mm -hmm. property ownership. Okay. So I think that was one. Mm -hmm. But then also looking at Raila mother combination, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about rule of law. I'm thinking about you know the civic space, mm -hmm. expanding the civic space. Mm -hmm. And I think for me what really I was expecting was operationalization of the uh, Public Benefits Organization Act of 2013, mm. which the Jubilee government didn't uh, implement at all. At all, okay. Um, it was just assented by Kibaki, mm -hmm. never, implemented. never implemented. So I think for me that 
could have come out uh, a bit more strongly. Mm -hmm. um, but also in the cooperative sector, mm -hmm. uh, it's like I said, it's a big. It's a big sector. Yeah. So I think I expected it to at least mention a bit of a ministry, at least a ministry that will sort of uh, focus on the cooperatives as well. Mm -hmm. But also just thinking about even though if the ministry is too much, mm -hmm. merging it with the right ministry. Because right now it's merged with agriculture. How mm -hmm. do we ensure that cooperative is in the trade industry? Mm -hmm. But one of the things that um, the financial sector is struggling with mm -hmm. is uh, cybercrime. Okay. So if the Azimio government can mm -hmm. create... Uh, invest technology within the circles mm -hmm. um, in a way that uh, we are able to curb the cyber crime. Mm -hmm. Because actually it's, it's, a, it's a funny joke, but mm -hmm. cyber crime is the largest economy after US and China. Wow. <laughs> and we are, and the sector is suffering in Kenya. And, and also we need to think about technology mm -hmm. as well. And yeah. I'm glad the gentleman who presented the ICT uh, question right there, that is mm -hmm. uh, Brad Gameli, who is a good friend of mine, he's a cyber security expert. Uh -huh. We have a bit of time to go. Uh, I'm going to ask two questions. Yes. Uh, one of the biggest unifiers uh, that works across the board is education. And he says that it's yeah. going to give free education to everyone from nursery to university. Mm -hmm. How tenable is this? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it even tenable in a minute or so? Um, for me, I think it's tenable. Mm -hmm. I think it's the intention. So the first thing Kibaki said that we'll have free primary education, everyone mm -hmm. was like, how? How, how is that okay. going to be practical? Mm -hmm. But also, what I want to appreciate, if you look at Singapore, mm -hmm. they don't have mining, they don't have agriculture, they don't have land, but they have invested in their, their skilled labor force. Mm -hmm. 98 to 99% of their labor force mm -hmm. is actually, so you, you can't really hire a Singaporean. It's so expensive. <laughs> and thinking about Kenya, mm. strategically, it's very it's a regional hub, I sure. would say. Mm. If we look at the bigger picture of AFTA mm. and really invest in our semi-skilled and mm. skilled, then labor. we can be able to export labor. Wow. So if, it's, if, it, if we actually get there, mm -hmm. we'll be able to position ourselves to be able to have more impact. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate also the foreign policy that he brought on board, thinking about how do we invest in the regional bodies and all mm -hmm. that. So I think that is very strategic by itself mm -hmm. in a way that, you know what, we can't be an island. Mm -hmm. Let's try and position ourselves mm -hmm. because we are investing in education, mm -hmm. we're investing in all this manufacturing, mm -hmm. we have an entry point an entry in terms point. of foreign policy. And do you think all of this is going to lower the cost of living in that second? Cost of living? Yes, cost of li uh, living, yes, and especially in the discussion about uh, uh, debt restructuring yep. and how that then will be able to allow us to invest in the social sectors mm -hmm. and especially what he's talking about the 6,000 mm -hmm. uh, Kenya shillings and of course the sanitary towers that I was talking about mm -hmm. it's a dire need in this country sure. I appreciate that they actually recognized they actually that as well it. All thank right. you Bukimburu, thank you so much for your time we've been speaking to Bukimburu who is a public policy and youth development advocate right here in Kenya and of course we are expecting more manifestos and we're going to be analyzing all of them right here and we hope to invite you again by the way thank you, you did a thank good you. job <laughs> <Sante>. <laughs> all right that's why we ended on business cafe tomorrow is counterfeit anti-counterfeit day we want to handle what things you're buying uh, that are fake that are actually affecting the way you live your life and how to curb all of this this and much more on tomorrow's episode of business cafe i'm brian to many thanks for your invaluable company enjoy the rest of your viewing